Hello everyone! In this video we are going to cover some of the basic uh, illustrator tools necessary for CAD or vector design. Um, these are some of the frequent shortcuts that we went over in the previous video. However, now we are going to focus on some of the essential tools. To begin with, we are going to look at the selection and direct selection tool. First we'll look at the selection tool, which is this um, black arrow right here and if you hover over it, it will give you the name as well as the shortcut which is uh, V. The selection tool is primarily used to uh, select an entire object and move it from one place to another like this. However, there are three other ways to use a selection tool. Um, the first one is to individually select the object and move it around like so. The second one is to key select which means to drag around the shapes you're interested in and uh, to move them both at the same time. And the last one is to hold the shift key and select individual objects so that you can move them around all together, like so. The direct selection tool on the other hand is this white arrow. If you select the direct selection tool, you are able to edit the existing shapes there are also three major ways to use the direct selection tool. The first one is individual anchor point. If you just double click on an anchor point, you can click and drag and alter that. The second one is to center the object. And the last one is the corner rounder. The corner rounder basically are these little dots right here, uh, which allow you to drag on them and alter um, each one of the uh, sides of the star. If you would like to alter just one of the sides, you're simply going to double click on the anchor point and then click on the corner that you'd like to alter. So the takeaway here is that the black arrow is representing the selection tool and the white arrow represents the direct selection tool. The selection tool allows you to move an entire object whereas the direct selection tool allows you to edit an existing object. There are numerous places in Illustrator where you can change the color of a specific object. Um, however, in this tutorial, I'm going to focus on three major options, which you can find from the toolbar menu right here, from the control panel right here, and from the panel dock on this right hand side. I'm going to begin by selecting this shape that I'd like to color in, and then I'm going to make my way down to the fill from the toolbar menu. To change the color from no fill to something else, I'm simply going to double click on it. And from the color picker menu, I can select whichever color I'd like. I can also work with the hue to alter that. Or I can make my way to the color swatches where I can select a color from the pre-existing options. To change the stroke from the default black to something else, simply go ahead and click on it. Find the color you like and click OK. To switch the colors between the fill and the stroke, simply click on this arrow right here and it will switch the colors back and forth. Another way to color in is to use the control panel. And to select the fill color, simply choose one of the options available or from the library menu. You can choose to focus on all of the swatches, the color swatches and the gradient patterns or other color groups. And to change the stroke, just go ahead and click on this arrow and apply the color you'd like to work with. The third way to work is to make your way to the panel dock. If you would like to apply a gradient, there are two ways to do that. Um, the first one is to select the gradient from the toolbar menu and the second one is to select the gradient uh, from the panel dock. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the gradient from the toolbar menu. Go ahead and double click on it and you already have several options to choose from. I'm just going to go ahead and choose a swatch number one. You can choose to work with um, a linear or a radial type, whichever one you prefer. You can change the angle yourself, or you can also change the color by double clicking on one of the options down here at the gradient um, slider, like so. You'll find the shape tool down here in the toolbar menu, and you're going to click and drag.
So notice all of these are drawn from the side to side. However, sometimes you would like to draw a shape from the center out. To draw from the center out, I'm going to hold the Option or the Alt key if you're on a Windows computer. Additionally, if I'd like to draw a perfect circle from the center, I'm going to hold the Option and the Shift key and then I'm going to click and drag, like so. The next tool is the Polygon tool and this one works a little more differently. Let's go ahead and select that. And if you'd like to change however many sides the Polygon has, just go ahead and click on the up and down arrow and that will allow you to change however many sides the Polygon has. Again, by double clicking on it, you'll get the option box and you can alter the options right in there as well. As you can see, some of these objects are hidden behind each other. So if you'd like to change that, just simply select one of the uh, shapes and right click, look for the arrange option, and then you can decide whether you want to bring it in the front, forward, backward, um, or set it to the back. Another interesting tool in Illustrator is knowing how to uh, further enhance the stroke line. So let's go ahead and select our shape. And the first thing I'd like to show you is um, this shape properties option right here, where if you click on it, you can see that you have quite a lot of options to work with. For instance, you can change the corner types. Let's go ahead and choose this inverted round. You can change all of the corners, so you can change only select corners. It is really up to you. Another thing I'd like to show you is when you select the shape you're working with and if you'd like to further alter the stroke line, you can also go to, you can also change the stroke weight. You can make it a little thicker if you'd like. You can change the stroke width profile. You can work with different uh, profiles that are available. Or you can also work with the brush definition. As you can see, we're working with a very basic brush definition, which is this straight line right here. However, you have quite a lot of options to choose from. And if you're looking for something a little more different, you can make your way down here to the brush libraries menu. And you can choose to work with a lot of different options. So let's go ahead and make our way to perhaps the geometric borders. So, you know, you can really get creative like this. If you would like to revert back to the default, simply select the shape, make your way to the brush definition, and go ahead and switch back to the basic. Next, we're going to explore the pen tool, the curvature tool, and the line tool. The pen tool can be found in the toolbar menu down here, and the curvature tool is right next to it. If you hover over, it will give you the names, and the line tool is right below the curvature tool. So the interesting thing with the pen tool is that it gives you a lot of flexibility to draw any free hand shapes. So click it from the bottom, one click, and release, click and release, click and release. Another way to use the pen tool is to, when you click and you're about to make your next point, you can go ahead and hold, which will curve in the line for you. As you can see, if you don't end the anchor point, it will continue making curved lines. Or if you'd like to make a sharp line, just go ahead and end that anchor point, click and release. The curvature tool is located right next to the pen tool. And if you just click on two points, you can decide if you want it to make it uh, straight or curved. And you can just continue. If you hover over on each one of the lines, you can also see that they will alter. And lastly, we have the line tool. We have several different options underneath the line segment tool. The line segment tool is also very similar. With one click, you can set your own options or you can decide to uh, just click and drag. You can also explore all the other options like the arc tool is really interesting too. Spiral tool, you might find it very interesting. All of these can be altered as we previously went over with the selection tool and the direct selection tools. Next, I'd like to talk about the Rotate tool. There are several different ways you can rotate in Illustrator. Um, the first one is to very simply select the object and hover over towards one of the sides where you can see this uh, double-sided arrow and just rotate 
The second way to easily rotate is to right click on the selected object, make your way down to transform and select the rotate option. From here you can select an angle at which you'd like to rotate and you can decide to preview to see how that will be rotated. Click OK to rotate the actual object on its own. And the third way to rotate is through using the rotate tool which is located in the tool section on the left hand side and if you hover over the tool it will give you the shortcut which is the letter R. If you click on it this will allow you to do the same functions as we were doing before with the black arrow key like so and if you double click on the rotate tool it will give you the same uh, rotate options where you can select whichever angle you'd like to uh, rotate your object. Another way to rotate is to rotate around the point. Um, I hope you noticed earlier when we were rotating the shirt, we were rotating around its own center, like so. If you double click on the rotate tool, it will give you the option to uh, not only rotate, but you can specify an angle and you can decide a copy. To duplicate or to repeat this process, uh, hold Command or Control D and keep pressing. If you noticed, um, when we were rotating, we were rotating around the center point of the ellipse. If you'd like to change that and rotate around a different angle or different points, you can simply select the um, shape. And by going over to the rotate tool, you can change the center point from uh, right here to elsewhere. So to do that, you are simply going to move this um, blue circle by holding the option key. So go ahead and hold the option key and move the blue circle to whichever point you'd like to rotate around and release. You can specify and you can decide a copy. And if you'd like to keep repeating this process, simply hold command or control D and go ahead and repeat that process. Another way to rotate is to rotate around the pivot point. So let's say this um, sleeve meets the cuff. And to do that, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to move the cuff closer to the desired location. Something like that. And by default, it's going to rotate around its own center. If I'd like to change that, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the pivot points or the area that I'd like to rotate around. And I'm simply going to, as you can see, it moves around that specific center. And I'm going to just go ahead and move it like so. Next, we're going to look at how to reflect and join objects, as well as how to manipulate and work around the anchor points. First, what you're going to do is select the object you'd like to reflect and then right click, transform, reflect. You can choose to reflect horizontally, vertically, or at an angle, and you can go ahead and choose to copy it. The next thing we're going to do is select both of the shapes, like so. Right click and join to join the top line and right click join to join the bottom line. We can further alter this shirt by curving in the neckline and curving in the hemline. And to do that, we're going to select the object and we're going to make our way to the anchor point tool, which can be found under the pin tool. Like so. To look at the anchor points a little more closely, I'm going to zoom in. And if you would like to add an anchor point, you're going to be able to find that option under the pin tool, add an anchor point. And what that is going to do, it is going to allow you to, once you select the anchor point tool, to maneuver around it. So I've added an anchor point right here in the middle. When I click in the middle, at the square, I'm able to maneuver both of the sides. And if I let go, and I click on either one of the side only, on this handle with the dot, 
I'm able to maneuver only one of the sides like so. To subtract an anchor point, let's say you no longer want this anchor point, you're going to make your way to the delete, delete anchor point uh, tool and you're simply going to click on the anchor point in the middle.